I do feel that as the presenting problem is so great, some of this money could be spent on more remedial assistance rather than on parent involvement in the school. Maureen, could I just interrupt you there for a moment? I just want to ask you a few questions about the language program in the school. Could you tell us about it? Yes, Alistair. We're very pleased with our language program, The Way It's Going. Uh, in the last two years, we've innovated a new program whereby we've spent many thousands of dollars buying new books, new readers, new tapes, new materials, new carpeted areas, so that we're hoping that we're all enjoying language. And reading is a vital part of language. And we feel by doing this, that we're already stimulating everyone to go on to bigger and better yeah. things. You do feel it has been successful? Well, I think the children feel it's been successful because they're the ones who are gaining the enjoyment from it and, and living it, I think, too. So what about in, the, in actual reading, for example? Do you think they've all developed as they should have in reading? Well, we feel that everyone has now has the opportunity to develop as well as they possibly can. Uh, we're hoping that this comes from a natural desire to want to read and to want to develop. We feel. Uh, and again, it can't be proven. We only know from the confidence that the children show, uh, from the reading that they're now doing, from the major use of the library, uh, that this all points to success as far as we're concerned. And so the night passed by. The baby was asleep. The animals and the shepherd stood round the manger in silence. Everything was quiet. The Christmas star shone over the old stable. For it was Christmas when this happened. Christmas long ago. The first Christmas of all. Judy, you've been librarian here for two years now. How have the children reacted to the library over that time? Initially, they started borrowing materials with some hesitation, some reluctance, uh, probably through fear of damage or loss or just unfamiliarity with a lot of books. Uh, there were very, very, very few in the, in the school when I came. Uh, but since then, it's steadily built up, and now I'm very pleased with the way most children borrow. Has there been any group of children who haven't taken to the library? Yes, there are groups, and I'm aware of these. Um, we've made efforts to involve them, um, and we're trying in more and more to involve these children in, in library activities. Has there been an increase in the number of children? Yes, steady increase in the number of children borrowing, steady increase in the range of materials, and steady increase in their selectivity in um, choosing the type of materials that they want. You've got a pretty active parents group now that comes in here regularly. Yes. Can you tell us about it? Uh, this started this year. Initially it started with a group that came and helped cover library books and spread to a group of mothers who helped with gardening and taking sport, taking excursions. And now we formed a Warrain community group which meets here every fortnight for outings or talks. And we have a child minding group that takes the littlies of these mothers. Yeah. Well, some of you ladies have had children receiving special help for reading in the school. Could you tell me about the help they've had? Um, I have a son, he couldn't read at all. Um, he was having difficulty in spelling and reading, and Mrs. Griggs has a special class here, and she started bringing him into her class and reading. And by the end of this year, he has read nine library books and nine reading books. And he has a, a card, every time he finishes reading, he gets a little card with a gold star on it. Good boy, Brett, you've read, you've read nine books this year and he's very pleased with him. Runs home with his car. Mummy, look what I've got today. He's quite happy about it. Yeah, how old is he? Like? Uh, Brett's eight years old. And uh, I find he's more cooperative in doing homework. He's asking me when is it time to do the homework so he can read to me, which is quite a change because normally he wouldn't do it. He'd go off out after school and play. And you do read with him? Oh, my word, you've got to. Otherwise, if you're at sink peeling vegetables, and he wants to read, and you're busy, he gets very disappointed because you can't stop to go and help him read. And he's quite happy about it. It certainly made a difference to him. Um, Michael is nine years old. Uh, approximately 12 months ago, he had a reading age of about four and a half, and his present reading age is six years and four months, which in that 12 months, not quite 12 months, he's made up almost two years in his reading age just because he's decided that he, he wants to read. He couldn't read before. Now he's learned to read, he's just happy to come to school. Before he didn't come to school, he couldn't read because everybody laughed at you. 
Never Tanny. That's quite And he wouldn't come to school. Oh, he used every excuse. He had a sore throat today and a headache tomorrow and the measles the next day. Every excuse in the book he could find. It was too cold. He didn't have this, didn't have that. Now he's happy to go to school. As long as he's read first. He won't come to school if he hasn't got his piece of paper with the pages on that he read last night. Oh, he's done his homework. Oh, yes, you've got to do that. Doesn't matter what, everything else has to go. Just the homework's the main part. Hmm. Well, I was worried about my son. He was in, started off in grade five this year. And um, he just didn't seem to be improving with his reading whatsoever. So I approached Mrs. Griggs, a reading teacher around at the infants, and she did, she was willing to take him. Well, he's improved out of sight this year. He comes to school every day, you know. We've had all the excuses under the sun. But he, he go to school, he has his really improved. He used to avoid coming to school. Yeah. He, he'd say he was sick, you know, and he really convinced me he was sick. He'd, have, he'd run a temperature and he'd just, he'd just make himself sick. Because he, he just couldn't read. And he, and he doesn't mind coming to... No, he loves coming to school now. Mike was an asthmatic and I've known him to give himself a real good dose of asthma so they didn't have to come to school that day. And he had a teacher last year in grade, when he was in a combined class, and if he didn't have the same teacher this year, he wasn't coming to school again. He, he ended up with the same teacher, but he reckons after, when it's next year he'll be going into the primary school. And I don't know how we're going to go then. Lee, you're putting an emphasis on parent involvement here. Could you tell us about it? That's right. We're um, conducting what we call a parent support program, um, which is a two-pronged type of thing where we um, try to give support to the parents from the school and also in return get support back to the school by the parents. Uh, firstly, by the, from the school's angle, we um, provide them with cultural experiences and uh, sort of practical things, uh, bring them into the school. I think our first job is to get them into the school and then they will uh, find out a bit about it. Um, and we're trying to make the school a more open place to the community, not only to parents. Uh, and then in return, I suppose, getting support back to the, from the parents so that um, the children are affected by that uh, in the sense of the parent having a greater knowledge of what the school is trying to do to their, their child and, uh, and understanding what we're, what we're about. Uh, Carol can probably fill us in on what she has done to, to promote this. Um, she runs the program and uh, so... Can you comment on that? In practical terms, to get parents into the school is a matter of welcoming them, um, making them feel that, that there is a place here within the school that, that is for them alone in some areas. Uh, um, mm. They're welcome during school hours, after school hours, at any time to use the building for their own activities. Um, and if it is during school hours, then it's a case of sharing, not pushing a parent into a corner, yeah, what about sharing the facilities. Um, well, those parents that come into the school at the moment, there are, there are traditional organisations that they participate in, like the Mother's Club and the Play Group. Um, there are evening activities, youth group, yoga group, keep fit classes from time to time. And then there are uh, activities that, that we have been initiating to some degree at the moment to encourage people who are very shy, who, who haven't uh, perhaps got very much experience of certain organisations um, uh, who come along simply for the company, for a cup of coffee and a chat uh, and perhaps share just a short term job so that they feel that they can participate in something but that they're not going to get caught the minute they walk in the school. Mm. There's no pressure on them. Is there any reaction what about you guys to Well, I, I sort of realise that the long term goals of this program, this parent support program, will perhaps lessen the problem that I face today, the children's problem um, remedial reading in particular. But I do feel that um, as the presenting problem is so great, some of this money could be spent on more remedial assistance rather than on parent involvement in the school. But research in England does says that, uh, now if you take the Bladen report and the Bullock report, that no matter what sort of attempt you make to you know, in remediation, if you don't have parent support and parents understanding what we're doing, uh, then it's been shown that you don't get anywhere. Perhaps I'm rather cynical, Lee, and that over the years I see the parents I don't need to see, and unfortunately I very rarely see parents who, who need help with their children.
and helping their children at home. These are the ones that don't come to see me. That's what we're trying to overcome. And you think uh, this program will overcome? I think it has. It has started already. The number of parents coming into the school, not on a formal parent-teacher night, but just coming into the school to see how their, their, their child is, is doing, or just to come and have a chat with the teacher. But wouldn't they have come anyway? No, I don't have, think so. we have more parents in the classroom now than we did before, just to come and work with the children. But are they the parents of the children who need remedial help? I'm seeing it from a remedial teacher's point of view. I think, I think that the parents of those children could help each other a lot more if they feel so isolated, if they knew of each other's situation, having children that require special attention. And, and so far, uh, uh, you've got to concentrate all of your energy on the children, and there's no one to concentrate or give any time or consideration or support to the parents as special people too, who are in a special situation. There's no one backing them up. Uh, and so if, if attention could be given to them and time and consideration of their own activities as well as their child's welfare, uh, I feel sure that in the process of meeting with each other, uh, uh, they would feel less inhibited. They would express their concern for their children that they have undoubtedly. They'd be able to express it more articulately and feel supported by each other in that area specifically. Look, is it really having a lot of effect on the children in greatest need? Well, uh, I can't see how it can have very much effect in one year. Uh, I, I think that the foundations have to be laid for such a program, and it can't be jeopardised by people expecting quick results. It's, it's an enormous project when you consider it. If you want parents' potential to be brought forward so that they actually enrich their children's lives, uh, their potential has been damped down for many years by their circumstances. Um, it, they are like any class of children, you know, you can't just expect results in 12 months. It's an ongoing thing, let alone expect it to have any real effect on children. A at the moment, I would like to think that uh, uh, some success is shown by the fact that a parent might have had a good day seen some people, met some people, done something, and gone home and been polite and pleasant, you know, at tea time to the kids, and, and not immediately started in an argument, had some sort of personal satisfaction that might make them want to sit down and share a story with their children. Just very, you know, small things. If we can get the parents coming into the school and working in a similar situation to their children, then, uh, uh, which they are reluctant to do, uh, it's very difficult to get a parent to, to to paint something uh, alongside their child, because often the child has a, probably ends up with a better painting. Carol, can you give us examples of parent involvement? Yes, Alistair, I can give you three examples of, of activities that seem to be blossoming at the moment. The first one is uh, an activity where the children extended an invitation to the Derwent Valley Choral and Drama Group, CWA ladies, and the Bridgewater CWA ladies, and then invited their own parents along uh, and other ladies in the neighbourhood. We provided child minding for the occasion, the children provided the morning tea, the CWA provided the concert, and, and the interaction uh, enabled mothers with young children to realise that there is such an institution as the CWA that will support and help them. Um, the CWA ladies realised that there are women who are housebound with young children and have a genuine problem. And the children were able to see that they're part of a community that isn't exclusively school children. It's not all their way. And as, as hosts and hostesses, they were very pleased with mm. the occasion. Uh, another occasion has been um, an open night here at the school where adult education students had their work set up on display and the children provided an art display, their own artwork in each unit. Parents came hopefully to see their children's activities but were able to see something that they might be interested in as well.